Hey guys, how's it going? Jay here, welcome back to the channel. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. This is where we talk about hi-fi stuff. And uh, we're talking about power conditioners today. We're diving in, we're diving deep in guys. Um, well, here's the thing. If you want technical stuff, if this is you know your attempt to learn more about the technical side of things, this video is not for you. You can click out if you want to. But if you wanna stay, um, to listen to my experiences with power conditioner as someone who has you know, tried multiple different power conditioners and also in many different price points. So as you know, I worked in a high-end retail store and I got to try some power conditioners that were rather very, very expensive. And I also got to try power conditioners and you know, power regenerators or whatnot um, you know, from my own hi-fi journey here in the studio as a reviewer, as a, as a person who enjoys hi-fi. But here's the absolute truth. Out of the 99% of the power conditioners out there, and I want to say that I've tried the majority of power conditioners, that's how many I have actually tried, none of them really worked out for me. Okay, it, it may have worked out for some other people, but it really has not worked out for myself. And especially that was true for power amplifiers. Now I have nothing against plugging in source components to power conditioners. That actually, you know, depending on what source and depending on how much it's affecting the source and stuff like that, it actually can improve your sound. But I'm talking about strictly plugging in your amplifiers. And I always wondered why not just myself, but a lot of people in the industry and a lot of people who enjoy this hobby didn't have that positive experience uh, with plugging in power amplifiers to power conditioners or power regenerators and so on. And so I asked around and you know, one of, one of the reason why, and I think it's a valid reason, was that these devices were technically current limiting. So you would hear a lot of times nowadays because you know manufacturers caught on to the trend, they would put in their marketing term, this is non-current limiting. Now, that's questionable, but some manufacturers do state that in their products of power conditioners. Now anyways, despite that, until this day, I've only heard a handful, actually you know, just one line of power conditioners that actually worked for me. And that was the Niagara AudioQuest uh, lineup of power conditioners. In the beginning, I was very skeptical, and let me tell you how I found out that it actually made a huge difference. Now, obviously, this depends on the amplifier, the gear as well that you're using, but the gear that we were using was Name Gear. So we were using a Name Classic series, which is uh, in, you know, independent um, components. So we had the streamer and the network player, and then the pre-amplifier and, and, the, and the amplifier, and the integrated amplifier. Now, I don't remember the exact models, so, so, um, but it was second from the top of the line or something like that at the time. So a client came in to purchase the name stack, we call it, while I was working at the high-end uh, retail store. And you know he was listening to the name and he really loved it. The speakers were the Wilson Audio Sabrinas, which he also bought. And he really loved the sound. He really liked the, the entire thing going. And then the client suddenly asked me, what is everything plugged into? Because I really like the sound I'm getting, but I want to be able to 100% be sure that the sound I'm getting is not affected by any other things. So I said, well, well it's connected to the Niagara uh, 7000, the Niagara 7000 at the time. And he said, well, can you plug it directly into the, into the wall? Can you plug the name stuff, all of it, into the wall? So I said, why not? And I did that for him. And the sound just collapsed. I mean, just absolutely collapsed in comparison to what we had before. It was less dynamic, it was more grainy, and this was audible. It was, you know, and in fact, I think we were getting actually more volume and dynamic headroom, you know, when we had it hooked up to Niagara 7000. So that was a kind of an eye-opening experience for me. Um, but other times, you know, I've tried even more expensive power conditioners from very reputable brands, you know, from all over the world. And I personally never got to replicate 
that experience for myself using different power conditioners and experimenting. So if I had the money, I would get the Niagara 7000 when I you know, save up a little bit, but it will be the last thing I get because that's power, right? I want to optimize whatever I have first and make it sound great. And the Niagara 7000 will be something that is added on later on to even even enhance that effect. But anyways, that, that's, a, that's another point. I, I don't want you guys to go out and buy a power conditioner right now just because I, I said all this, right? Because yes, it makes a difference, but the other things in the system makes a more of a big difference. Like that name stuff has to be of a certain quality before you put in the power conditioner. It's not gonna make a $500 amplifier sound like a $20,000 amplifier. It's just not, I hope you guys know what I mean. But anyways, so I get questions from you guys a lot of the times. What is a cost effective way? What is a budget power conditioner? And the thing is budget and power conditioner doesn't really add up. It, it really doesn't for the most part. And that's especially true for power amplifiers when you're plugging in power amplifiers because when we're talking about power conditioning, we're talking about rather big devices, like a lot of filtering, you know, a lot of toroidal transformer or big tra uh, toroidal transformer and whatnot. And really for power conditioning, you get what you pay for in most you know, circumstances. And in fact, when you pay more, sometimes you, even, you don't even get the actual effect that you desire, the obvious change. And the change may not be equivalent to what you spend. So the diminishing return is pretty high on power conditioners. So what is a cost effective way? And I will tell you right now one secret way that I found that actually makes a measurable difference for those that care about measurements and a audible difference. And that is dedicated line. So I'm sure some of you you know, people who have been in the audiophile world for some time may be familiar with this. But for those of you that don't know, most of your lines are shared with your refrigerator, with your microwave, you know, with, with whatever in your house, which technically introduces, you know, a problem in your circuit, a power circuit that introduces noise and all this sort of stuff. Okay, so a dedicated line is basically what it sounds like, a dedicated line that only is, is installed by, by an electrician, not an audiophile or an audio company, but you call your nearby electrician and you pay them about anywhere from $500 to $1,000. I paid about $700 for mine in Canada and those were Canadian dollars. And depending on the job, it can vary you know, in difficulty and that's why the price is a little bit fl uh, fluctuating and also depending on the electrician you talk to. So shop around, shop around, talk to different electricians, see their qualification and reviews and so on. Do your research as always. When you ask an electrician to add a dedicated line, what ends up happening is you're basically asking the electrician to install a, uh, an outlet that is only going to be plugged in for your amplifier. And this can be a 20 amp or a 15 amp or whatever you wish, depending on the country you live in and, and the amplifier that you have. And this actually audibly, from my experience, improves the sound quality. So instead of spending $10,000 or $5,000 or on a, on a power conditioner that may work or may not work, a dedicated line is something that is actually proven to work. And I say this because recently, actually, we found something very interesting. As you know, I freelance for Soundstage magazine and they usually measure stuff. They recently started to measure amplifiers as well. And so they measured the XM1 Plus from Kinky Studio and they found that not only does plugging the amplifier into the dedicated line increase power rating, right? So it get more wattage out of it, but it also got, I believe, less noise floor. I could be wrong there. But, but that in itself, the increase in wattage performance says something that is actually doing something good overall. So that's a good assurance to you know, this thing working. 
And dedicated line in comparison to yes, someone has to come into your house and take a look and and fiddle around and and you know install something in your house, but that is a lot more cost effective than buying a device, an extra box for two thousand, five thousand dollars, in my opinion. Now, by all means, after you get the dedicated line, you can try to find a power conditioner that works for your system, that works for your power power amplifier. Or, or whatnot, but a dedicated line, in my opinion, is something that should be installed first if you're an audiophile and you're very serious about this and you really want your power, uh, power to be treated and so on, then it's, a, it's the first step that I think you should take. So that's just my take on power conditioning and coming from experience, trying various different things. So if this video was helpful to you, consider subscribing and clicking that like button. And also consider supporting us on Patreon to keep us independent and keep on going to make these honest reviews and videos for you guys. And I'll see you guys on the next one.